Dinochirus, a creature of Pathotitans that are probably mostly referred to by his nickname rather than his actual name. Let me give you more the reason to either love them or hate them, by teaching you how to secure more wins, or making the fights against them more difficult. And if you like this type of content, make sure your actions make the message clear. And without further ado, let's hop in it. Now, just like the Spinosaurus video, Dinochirus can fight on both land and in water, so I'm gonna separate this battle from water and land. Let's first analyze what you can do in water fights. In water, of course, your opponents will be more limited. You either run into Sucumimuses, Sarcosuchuses, Spinosauruses, or also might have to deal with other Dinochirus. There's also the modded creatures, but I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. Now of course, I am here to teach you how to fight as a Dinochirus, but I will also take into account what creature you should try and avoid. Do not misunderstand. My wish is for all of you to be better PvP players, but there are some creatures that are best to avoid, especially if you're a new player or lack experience in PvP. The creature I am referring to are Sarcosuchus. In my experience, it is best to not 1v1 a Sarcosuchus. The reason for that is due to the Sarcosuchus' advantage in terms of abilities and stat, at least mobility and speed-wise. At the time of this recording, Dinochirus don't really have any abilities that dish out any status effects on his opponents. In other words, Dinochirus only relies on blunt damage. Of course, the damage output it does are nothing to scoff at. But those hits are only positive if you can actually manage to hit your target. That's where the circle speed comes into account. No matter how fast you try to make the duck, the Sarcosuchus will always have an edge in terms of water speed. Of course, in recent updates, the Sarcosuchus did get a health nerf, making it kind of a glass cannon. But what does that matter when it's fast enough to dodge every attack? Even if you do manage to land a lucky blow, unlike the Spinosaurus or the Sucumimus, you do not have the bleed effect or give the bleed effect. Meaning, even if you don't hit the target, the target won't lose any HP whatsoever. And before you start thinking that you should attack while they're charging up their attacks, do bear in mind that their speed do not decrease even while charging up their attack. It doesn't make it better that they can make you bleed immediately after their high damage output. Do also note, with the streamlined skin, they have better turn radius than you. So here's the problem, you got a target that is too quick and can dodge every possible attacks, and then there's you, who are strong but can't land a single hit, or at least enough of them. And before you try speed Dinochiris with webbed feet and swimming tail, I tried that too in a 1v1 and that didn't bode well. The Sarko will continue to dance around you while you swim around frantically, trying to hit your target which you can, and then he'll end it with either one finish a crushing bite, or let you bleed out. If you still insist on fighting Sarkos, then I suggest teaming up. If you are two, then I will suggest attacking while the Sarko is charging up his attack. Take a look. The charge part is dangerous, yes, but only if you let it charge up to a maximum damage output. If you attack from both sides, then they will put more pressure on the croc, especially if you're 2 against 1. You have 8 to 9 seconds to get as many hits in as you can. After that, do not fret if you get the hit by the bleed attack, you just need to finish the battle before you bleed out. If you're going to fight something else than a Sarko, say a Spino, then you'll find the condition of the battle to be a bit better. In terms of swimming speed, you should be on equal ground as the Spinosaurus. Uh, or water, for that matter. In any case, while you may be equally in speed, you have better mobility or turning radius in water. 
meaning tail riding in water shouldn't be a problem. If the Spinosaurus haven't traded the normal tail for the swimming tail, then face tanking shouldn't be a problem at all. You can kill the Spinosaurus faster than the tail can damage you, into a lethal stage at least. As for diving during the fight, you'll find that option to be a lot more favorable compared to the Spino. Like we discussed in the video of how to properly fight as a Spinosaurus, we discussed that the Spinosaurus range of attacks are well suited for those below him, under him or in front of him. This does apply to the Dinochirus as well, however, unlike the Spinosaurus, you do not have a target on your back. That said, I also discussed that being underneath the Spinosaurus is a bad idea due to the high damage I put from the claw attack and the bleed effect. I'm not saying you shouldn't dive at all, but you should use it to lure them down with you. Once they are down there with you, you can swim on top of them and hit them at the weak point, that being the sail. Smart Spinosaurus players, which are pretty rare these days, knows that they only need to wait at the surface. If they won't expose their weakness to you, then you just have to tail ride them. You do have a better turning radius than them, so it shouldn't be too hard. Of course, this strategy are meant for 1v1s, so don't do what I do in this video. 2 against 1, there's not much you can do, but you can put up a good struggle. You look cooler that way. As for what build you should go for, that's actually kinda still debatable. I recommend either speed build or defense build. It kinda depends on how you like to fight. If you're more of a face tanker, then I would go defense, and if you're more of a hit and run, I would go speed. I have tried both build, but I prefer defense due to me liking to face tank. In terms of 1v1s, you shouldn't have any problems with the exception of Sarko. Now, I know I give Sarkos a lot of credit, but hey, if you are a Dinochirus and you know how to beat Sarkos with guaranteed victory, why are you even here? Enlighten us down in the comments on how you do it, and then maybe we'll all learn. As for the Doxus arsenal, we got the standard head attack and the main weapons, the claw abilities. And as you can see, we are going to get an addition to the claws in the future. When that happens, I'll have to see if I gotta change the strategy a bit. As for hide, we got a hide that can boost the healing a bit. For leg abilities, we got one for land and one for water. And for tails, we got normal attack tail that can do some knockback and paddle tail. Head attack, limb attack and hide goes without saying, as we do not have any other options at the moment. Of course, for water fights, I would use the webbed feet for less uh, stamina drain and faster speed. And of course, swimming tail, as tail damage won't do really much in a water fight. Now, let's discuss the battles on land. It goes without saying that you'll face pretty much the rest of them on land. Of course, there are different scenarios on how your fights can turn out. Let's see what you should do if a pack of mid-tiers hunts you. If they have any extra status effect abilities, then try to make them hit each other. You also don't have to worry about not hitting your target. Dynakyrus are tall creatures, so everything will be beneath you. In other words, they will be where you can attack them. Dynakyrus has decent speed for a herbivore on land. Of course, do not waste your stamina if you don't have to, but you can chase if you want. If you do start losing stamina fast, then find anything to get cover. Trees, rock, or wall, anything will do. Remember, this is a battle of survival. You don't have to play nice. Of course, trying to catch something that is faster than you are difficult, and they will no doubt try to tail ride you. In this case, all you need to do are just walk backwards. The tail rider, most likely moving forward, will walk right into where you can attack him. In which case, you'll just have to hope he's slow enough for you to finish him off before they can finish you off. Another strategy is to target the weak members of the pack. Of course, this will only work on servers that has body down rules, so don't do this on official and expect it to work. Not to mention, it feels kinda satisfying taking something precious from a pack that tries to hunt you. One more thing. Do try to take the high ground in a battle. 
The tail attack does do some knockback, how much I don't know, but if you do, then you can probably knock some enemies off a ledge and they will sustain extra fall damage, making the battle easier for you. Now what can you do if a pair of Apexes decides to hunt you? Nothing much, there's nothing you can really do against a pair of Apexes, especially if you are a solo. Of course, if you decide to struggle to the very end, I would target one, and hopefully you might get lucky. Like I mentioned, one strategy is to target the weakest member of a pack. This is also a good example of not showing weakness. I mean, if you do, of course the enemy will use that against you. Even I will consider this a lucky moment. There's not much you can do against a pair of Apexes. As for 1v1ing Apexes, you will have a somewhat advantage in stats over them. And while you might not be as fast as some of them, you definitely have a good turning radius, being on par with even the Spino. Of course, if he decides to take this to the water, it is best to let him go, as he has better chance of utilizing his claw much better in water than on land. In which case, the battle could go either way, but I would personally let it go. Sometimes it's okay to let battle not end with death. If you're up against a land-based foe, then of course it's best to just do a head-on-head -head battle. Remember what I said about high ground, try to move your enemy into your attack range. If you're up against a player who knows what he's doing, this will be difficult, even with the slight stats advantage. They do have you beat in raw damage output, so you need to use your mobility to dodge their attacks if you can. Now the arsenal I would use for land fights are of course bite, claw abilities and dense feathers. As for feet I would use wobbling feet for the extra stamina regeneration and normal tail attack which can also cause knockback because swimming tail on land are stupid. Before I end the video there is a request I would humbly like to ask first. It's also kind of an apology if you might. It's just that each of these videos will take time to make. The only reason this video came out rather quickly are due to the fact that the Dinokairis fighting playstyle are similar that to the Spinosaurus, the dinosaur I main. Eh, minus the fact that Dinokairis can't bleed effect of course. Depending on what other dinosaur I will analyze, it might take some time due to the fact that I had to master a complete new playing style. But even with all that, I will make sure to deliver, and with that, I'll bid you adieu.